Hi, everybody. I just want to do a quick sound test and we're going to jump right in and get started. If you can hear me, there is a place for you to click on to raise your hand. So if you could just um, click on that and then that'll let me know that everybody can hear me OK. OK, perfect. The first hand went up. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Lania. Appreciate it. Hey, Joe, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So hopefully Travis, Elizabeth, the rest of you can hear me okay. And we're going to jump right in. One thing about my webinars, I always like to start on time because I know how important time is for everybody. So we're going to jump right in. And this is being recorded. It is Webinar Wednesday. I'm doing these webinars, um, not every Wednesday, but a few Wednesdays a month. And it's sponsored by Worth Point. And this one is How to Sell on eBay for the Beginner. I'm Dana Crawford. I am the strategic director at Worth Point. They actually hired me a few years ago. About me, I've been an eBay seller since 1997. I do make a living full time on eBay. And I'm also a consignment seller. So people send items to me. I list them for them on consignment. I also do a lot of public speaking and I run the treasure hunts for Worth Point. We travel around the country. The next one coming up is in, uh, I might do a mini one up in Vegas in January, but because I am going to be in Vegas, but I think um, the next major one is in Fort Lauderdale, Florida on February 24th. We're doing an eBay workshop up there on February 23rd. So if you mark your calendar and you're up for a road trip or travel, it would be a good time to come to uh, Fort Lauderdale. And then you can always check the Worth Point website. It's worthpoint.com slash treasure hunt and see the location of the next treasure hunts. So the legal stuff, I just ask that you do not copy my, my um, presentation that you don't sell it <laughs> you're welcome to share it I don't mind just please don't sell it and um, copy it now I do allow questions however I I'm working on my own so I can't stop and read all the questions so I do ask that you um, you can type your question in to the question box but I won't be answering them till the end. So I suggest if you have a question, type it into the question box. And then if suddenly you realize that I've answered your question, then please go back and remove it so that at the end of um, this presentation, I can go through all of the questions. This is being recorded. Everybody will receive a copy and um, that'll be sent via email. If for some reason you have to leave, you can always email your question to Dana Crawford, dana.crawford at worthpoint.com, and Dana has two N's. Or I'm also going to give you the direct phone number to contact eBay because they're always happy to answer questions. Now, this presentation does not go through step by step how to join eBay, how to join PayPal, because it's seriously very simple. You're just going to go right to eBay.com and click on register. You're going to go right to PayPal.com and click on register. And it's like with any basic internet program, you just log in, you register, just remember your password and get it set up and that'll get the ball rolling. Once you get that set up, you're going to want to set up uh, the mobile app. So I'm assuming that everybody here has a smartphone. Uh, those that have smartphones, you're going to go to the PayPal, or excuse me, the Apple Store or Google Play, whichever smartphone you have, and then download eBay mobile. And then you're going to also want to go in and download the PayPal app so that you have them both on your smartphone. Now those that don't have smartphones, if you have a dumb phone, don't worry. If you have a dumb phone, it could be time to upgrade because the smartphone is going to be your best friend when it comes to um, selling on eBay and buying on eBay, browsing the site. It makes life so much easier. It's like having a personal assistant 
by having these apps on your smart device. Now, those of you that already have an eBay account, you can change your eBay ID. You can actually change your eBay ID every 30 days. It's not recommended, but do know that if you have an ID that was from, you know, 15 years ago and you'd like to change it up to something more current, you can go in and change that and your feedback will follow you. You can actually have up to seven eBay IDs. I also don't recommend that, but you can have uh, more than one eBay ID on your account. Your PayPal ID is basically your email address, so it's pretty straightforward, easy to remember. Now, if there's anybody here that does not have anything to sell, please send me your address because I'd love to come visit. <laughs> I guarantee you I can look through your home and find stuff to sell. So we all have stuff. And that's the great thing about getting started on eBay because you usually start with items you have laying about around the house. And that's how we get started. Now, many times, especially me as a consignment seller, people will bring me their stuff and say, hey, Dana, this is worth millions because I saw it on the Antique Roadshow. So the Antique Roadshow says it's worth millions, so let's put it on eBay and let's make millions. Or they'll say they saw it in the collector's book. The collector's book says this Elvis Presley record is worth millions, so let's put it on eBay and make millions or they had an appraiser appraise their jewelry for millions, or they saw it on Google, so it must be true. So the thing is, we have to go by the current market value on eBay. It doesn't matter what any of these sites state. It's kind of like the same thing with real estate, with your home. If you have um, the average selling price in the neighborhood is X amount of dollars, your house is going to be valued at X amount of dollars. So we have to go by the current market value. Same thing with items on eBay. And to do that, we always have to research, 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 research. If you want to be successful on eBay, you will always research before you list eBay, I'm going to go through how easy it is to go through the eBay system and go to advanced search and look at sold and completed listings. And I'm also going to share with you how you can subscribe to WorthPoint. They do charge a fee because they have 15 years worth of data stored and they do pay for that data. So they charge a, a subscription fee and it runs from $19.99 to $39.99 a month, depending on which um, direction you go. However, today they're giving us a 50% off discount for the first month. So it would only cost you 10 bucks to go give it a try for the next 30 days, which I highly recommend. But if you're not gonna be selling vintage um, items or collectibles or antiques, then you won't need to use it. But now let's get started. The first we're going to search for items on eBay. So when you're brand new to eBay, I recommend you go shopping. Go explore the website, go do some shopping. And to do that, you're just going to pull up any eBay page and just type in a few keywords of what you like, like chapstick. Say, hey, this weather makes my lips chapped. I'm going to go buy me some chapstick. What better place to get it but on eBay? So you would just type that in the search bar. Or if you're going to start your um, whatever items that, that you're looking for to purchase socks, underwear, whatever it is, just type, type it in and you're going to start looking up current listings. Now, when I start researching, I can also use this toolbar to do my research. So I'm going to start with a vintage shaving brush. So I'm going to put those three words in vintage shaving brush. And then I'm simply going to click on search. And now it'll pull up all of the current listings on eBay with those three words, vintage shaving brush. So we can see that there are 750 listings uh, results for this search on this day. And you'll notice that off to the right on the top, there is a sort bar and or a sort tab and the default is called best match so when you see that you can click on best match and now we can take a look at adjusting our sort to either time ending soonest 
time newly listed for the current people that just put some on. Um, we can adjust it to lowest price first. So when we're shopping for chapstick, we can adjust that to the lowest priced chapstick on eBay. You can also adjust it to highest price first and then distance nearest first. So those are for people that want to do local pickup. Now, when we click on um, the lowest price, it'll reorganize those 750 plus listings and it'll bring the lowest price ones to the top. So first we see the top one, well, they're all 95 cents. So they're all auctions because we see they each have one bid on them. So they're all auctions. They started them at 95 cents. Next, we can adjust that sort bar to the right to highest price first. So let's take a look at the current listings. Who's asking the most amount of money for their shaving brushes? So the top guy is asking $395.95 or best offer. That means that you could make an offer on it. He's charging $8.75 shipping. And he actually has 13 watchers. The next one is the Vintage Girl Shaving Brush. It's actually a milk glass. She's asking $249.99 with a buy it now, $4.29 shipping. And there's no make offer on this one. And then the bottom one, they're asking $175 or best offer and $8.35 shipping. So these are all buy it nows. They're not auctions. You can also notice on the left-hand side of the page, there's what's called refinements. So, so you can narrow it down and pick and choose any of those that you'd like to uh, look at further. Those are always available to you whenever you do a search. They're different, um, words will come up for different refinements on different categories. Now, you can also go down and you'll see that they have a list of all items, auction items, fixed price, buy it now, USA only. So if you're searching for chapstick and you only want it to come from the United States, you could pick that one. You can also look for free shipping only and check off those. And these are all um, items that, item specifics that will help you narrow down your search. You'll also see returns accepted, completed listings, sold listings, and you can even dig deeper sometimes on some areas and click on more refinements. And when you do that, it'll show you a breakdown of some of the featured refinements and you can pick and choose that you only want to look at completed listings or sold listings. Now, when I start my research, I like to look at completed listings, not sold because, well, both completed and sold in one because I can take a look and learn from those that did not sell. So for example, we have rare vintage shaving brush. If it's in red or black, it means it did not sell. And if it's in green, it did sell. So the top one, they were asking $175. It was a buy it now. They were charging $8.35 shipping, and that did not work out for them. They did not sell that. The next one was a buy it now for $150, and they did sell it. And then the bottom one was an auction. They were had an opening bid of $129.99 with $4.99 shipping, and that did not work out for them. So... They probably um, started their auction too high, or maybe they should have added a buy it now to it, or there's a couple different things that um, they could try next time. So I call that take it out for a spin. Sometimes we put items on the first time and they don't sell. So, you know, for me personally, I usually give it a few months if they don't sell, if it's a buy it now. And then I start to look for strategies to adjust my words or adjust different things. But you can learn more about that as you go along. The main thing is that you're getting your item listed today.
<clears throat> excuse me. And then we're going to learn from those that sold and those that did not sell. So we want to be like the guy with the $150 shaving brush. So we want to do what he did. He had it as a buy it now that worked out and he sold it. Now worth point will also let you adjust to the highest price first and it goes back years. So we can see the first one, the highest price one that ever sold was $1,275. And it was a sterilized opal number 250 shaving brush. And it sold November 17, 2015. And then here's the next highest sold in 2017. And they included a barbershop um, mug with it. And then next we have in 2014 was 135 vintage shaving brushes. So if you do your research and some of your shaving brushes are not selling very well on their own, then you might want to keep them off to the side and save those to do in a lot or a bundle or a box lot of a bunch of them at once. And then you can just see the breakdown. Now this is the highest price first. Now, the great thing about WorthPoint is like I had one of these shaving brushes and so I couldn't find one on eBay. So I was able to find it on WorthPoint and this one sold for $1,275. You learn from what kind of keywords did they use and how did they list it. Now this guy listed his in jewelry, which I thought was really interesting. And he, um, had the word badger in there. Now he had B-A-G-G-E-R and he had bristle and he had number 250 shaving brush. And I would copy a lot of his words when I list in mine. I think I got about 800 for mine, but um, yeah. So I found out that this one was very rare. So when you research, it definitely helps you be successful. You want to identify the item. What kind of item is it? Take a look at the current market value by reviewing the price trends. How have they been selling over the last few years? How, what kind of trend it is, is it? What kind of words did they use in the title? Was it an auction or was it a buy it now? And also, did they have free shipping or not? Sometimes free shipping is very attractive. I know I tend to buy from eBay sellers with free shipping. Research is the key to success. So you're simply going to look at eBay's completed sold listings and then adjust the sort bar to the highest price first. And then on WorthPoint, you can also adjust the highest to the lowest. And you can also adjust it to sale date. So WorthPoint will reorganize their system and show you the most recent sales um, that WorthPoint pulls in data from eBay and other auction houses around the country. So it's not just eBay. So you're able to look at more data and more history on selling. But research before you list is definitely, it's not like back in the day, I used to put a Beanie Baby on and automatically make $1,000. I wish those days were still here, but it'd be crazy of me to put a Beanie Baby on for a thousand dollars right now because it definitely wouldn't sell for that. But back then it did. So I have to go by the current market value. So this is my most recent um, consignment item that I wanted to share because this person sent these to me and it was from this festival in Vancouver, Canada. And it was the Grateful Dead, Bet or Janis Joplin was in it, and there were all of these people in it. I couldn't find anything on this and on eBay. There were this is not a very common item. It was very challenge of challenging for me to try to find more information about it. So I also found out, thanks to WorthPoint. I went and did a little search. I typed in Trips Festival in the search bar on Worth Point, And lo and behold, there it was. January 23rd, 2011. 
it had the same graphics that mine had, and it sold for $2,499 in 2011. And then I found the next one, like too bad I didn't have this $10,000 one. <laughs> but then this other one sold for 1275 or two two thousand seven hundred fifty two in 2008, but it had a different graphic. So mine had this, this other graphic and it gave me an idea on where to start. So what I did was I found this one that sold for $2,499 on WorthPoint. So I paid attention. What words did they use? What category did they place it in? They put it on eBay under entertainment, memorabilia, rock and roll, and write to the artist of Grateful Dead and under posters. Now this was just an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. But the wonderful thing about it was they had all of this write up. So I learned that this was Grateful Dead's first performance outside of the United States. So that was really good information that otherwise I would have never known. So I was able to copy all of that information and paste it into my listing. And I sold mine for $3,500. Thank you very much. So getting started on eBay, we're going to use the sell your item form. So there's basically several ways you can list. It's called sell your item form. There's also sell one like this sell now and sell similar. Now, when you see an item that you're searching through eBay, you'll notice that it says sell one like this right near the bottom. Usually you can find it under the photographs. And when you click that, you'll see that it'll start your listing. Now, here's the deal. When you list an item on eBay, you're basically gonna have a category a condition of your item. You're going to add a title. Is it new or is it used? You're going to add photos. We're going to go into all this. Item specifics, description box, a price for your item, shipping of your item, and a return policy. That's it, folks. This is your checklist for listing an item on eBay. This contains all of the this is your checklist for getting started, knowing that you're going to be able to complete all of these things to list your item. So now let's go back to sell one like this. So say you have done your research, you have this coffee mug from Portugal, and you're like, oh my goodness, I want to do just what they did. So the top guy got $611 and it was in green and it sold in September. And then the bottom one sold for 610. Now we can see they had bids on it. So we could take it a step further and actually click on the word 31 bids or 32 bids. And then it'll show us the breakdown of what they started the price at. So we could do just like they did. But when you click on sell one like this, it automatically pulls in the category and gets the ball rolling. Now on WorthPoint, you can also do the research and you can actually click on sell similar item on eBay and it too will start the process for you to listing your item. Now this is a feature that you can use or not use on WorthPoint, it's up to you, it's no additional charge. The main thing is when you list an item on eBay and you learn from successful sales, but when you list your item and you sell one like this, it'll pull in the category for you. And now you're going to work on your title. It'll also pull in the title, but sometimes people don't have a lot of words in their title or they just don't have, or they have too many words. So you want to try to focus on important keywords. I always, like to suggest that every word you put on eBay is like bait on the hook. It's a piece of bait that goes out to the eBay C and that is what helps you with sales. So you have to really pay attention to um, your keywords. Oops. 
Thanks, CJ. <laughs> um, and then you want to have, is it new or used? And then also you want to make a break it up with caps, lowercase, uppercase, and break up your words. I don't like, or eBay doesn't recommend all caps, and I don't like all caps. So I like to break it up a little bit. And then add the size to your title, the color, the brand. And then if there's any catchy words that people use, like one that I learned about was called leg and look, which also means art to wear. Those are two words that I add to my clothing. So just for fun, as part of your homework, do a search on um, completed or on sold listings, adjust it to highest price first, and add the word leg and look. And you'll be shocked when you see what these clothes sell for. Condition box is next. And this is where you're going to put in if your item is damaged, it has any stains. Um, it should say chips, not chips, chips. Keep it brief. And you could say photo show all. Now I'm going to show you some of my listings so that I practice what I preach. I don't just say this is the way you should do it. I actually do it. Next, you've got your item specifics. Now, a lot of times as an eBay consultant, I'll get people come to me and go, oh, eBay sucks, my sales are so slow. And then many times I'll go in there and they're skipping item specifics. They're not filling anything out. They're just in such a hurry to list, 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 and they're not spending quality time filling these out. It's worth taking the time because as you, you may recall when we were looking through the beginning, slides there's those refinements and those refinements are also item specific so it's important that you put all of this in because you want to increase the odds for a sale and item specifics are going to help you increase the odds so spend the time every category is different so they'll have the brand the 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 style the waist and they'll have all these themes and spend the time to fill it out as much as you can and you can also add your own if needed next you'll come to the photo section now I'm going through this as I'm listing on a laptop or a desktop and I skip the photo section because I'm going to use my smartphone to add the photos but for those of you that have a dumb phone you're going to just click on add photos from here and it'll pull up your graphics from your computer where you probably had a digital camera you took them with a digital camera you plugged it into your laptop you uploaded the photos and you're going to click on add photos and pull them in here but for those using smartphones we're going to come back to this next you come to the description box basic Describe the item, hello, not too hard. But the main thing is you want to keep it short, sweet, easy to read. Keep it in the left margin. There's nothing worse than coming into an eBay listing and it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. You think you need an attorney because they got so many terms in there. It's ridiculous. I'm old, so I like to have a larger font so that I can read it and every, everyone can read it without getting out their reading glasses. So I try to keep my font uh, number 18. And then also use black text with white background. Very basic and simple. It's not like back in the day we'd have falling snow and, and all this activity going on. And you also want to include flaws. So if your item has um, a stain, a chip, a crack, you want to include it in your description box in addition to your condition box. And you want to have a good vibe on your listing. So you want to keep it so people are happy, they want to shop from you. There's nothing worse. I saw a listing one time where it said, I only ship on Tuesday because my grandma comes on Wednesday or I have to take the dog out or blah, 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 blah. Or don't, uh, if you have a problem when you get my item, don't leave me bad feedback, please contact me. And it goes on and on about feedback. And this gives me a bad taste in my mouth. I think this is a problem seller. Um, I don't want to shop with them, so I will go on to someone else. So you want to have a good vibe, a good positive feeling. 
you can um this is this direct link will take you right, right to my ebay store and you can see i practice what i preach it's a s k d a n n a dot com and feel free to go look at any of my listings all right so you're you can also add your descriptions, I mean your con um, measurements. If you're selling photos or clothing, excuse me, if you're selling clothing, you definitely want to add your measurements because it's going to help you with returns, avoiding returns. So you can have um, your title, your condition, your measurements are, and put in the waist, the seam, the rise, the thighs, everything. And I do like to say smoke free. I I am smoke free. Um, I don't tell them about my cat, but <laughs> if I didn't have a cat uh, or a dog, I would say animal free or pet free as well. However, I don't mention that, but it's up to you. <laughs> then you're going to choose your auction. If you do an auction, you can list it anywhere from one day to 10 days. And if you do a fixed price, you can list it anywhere from three days to 30 days or good till canceled. And that's usually what I do. I like good till canceled because it just automatically renews every 30 days and I don't have to stress about it. So that's an option. You can also add make an offer so that people can either bid on your item or they can make an offer or they can um, buy your item or they can make an offer. So you would just choose which way you want to do it. Whoops. And then you'll also see that there is schedule listing if you would like to do um, a schedule, which means say, um, well, of course, the holidays are coming next week, as a matter of fact, and maybe you don't want any auctions to end. You want a list, but you don't want them to end on Christmas Day. So you're going to go ahead and schedule those so that they end the day after Christmas Day or they end the weekend. Or maybe you're going to do um, an auction that should end on a Sunday. So you could schedule it to start on a Thursday and then run it for 10 days. And then you'll get 10 days out of those listing, that listing and you'll get two weekends out of it and it'll end on a Sunday. So those are the kinds of things um, you want to sort out. Then there's also, it's now called eBay um, Charity. It was called eBay Giving Works. So if you want to donate anywhere from 10% to 100% of your sale to your favorite nonprofit, and eBay will give you a credit based on whatever amount that you donate to the nonprofit. So as you see, I use the food bank a lot, and sometimes I'll click on that, and then I'll click um, 10% of my sale goes to our local food bank. And then the money automatically comes out of my PayPal account, goes to the nonprofit, and then eBay will give me 10% back on my fees. So it's a win-win if you choose. Next, you're going to choose how you're going to ship the item. So Free shipping is attractive, as I mentioned. The great thing about eBay is they're going to make recommendations to you. They're practically going to hold your hand. So they've made it so darn simple for getting started. You may even see a little bit of a different screen than what I'm showing you today. But you'll see that it's basically the same information. And they're going to make suggestions. Well, we say this item will fit. It weighs about two pounds. It'll fit um, the estimated cost is between $5.95 and $11.55, and we suggest you offer free shipping. You would just check off the box. You're also going to see a choice on international shipping. I'll tell you right now that I suggest you say yes to global shipping. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, my God, I'm, I'm not going to ship international because we got customs forms and we've got all these worries. Well, now eBay has simplified this whole process. So all you have to do is say yes to the global shipping program. And then you can, um, if you can't, sorry, my husband's loud. If you can't find that, you would just go to your preferences um, on manage my store or on your account and then look for preferences and then you'll find it under um, international shipping and say yes to global shipping. Now, 
That means simply that your items are going to automatically show up in these 69 plus countries around the world. But when it comes shipping day, you're simply going to box up your item and ship it to Kentucky. And then eBay is going to ship that for you from Kentucky to Australia or Canada or wherever it's got to go. And you have no stress, no customs forms, no added hassles. You just ship that domestically, whatever your price was to Kentucky and eBay takes over. They also will protect you from any damage or loss or bad feedback. So it's, it's a win-win. And I always say, say yes to global shipping and then no to international shipping outside of global shipping. That simply means that there are some countries that are not in the global shipping program. And in my opinion, there's a reason. It means that mail gets lost a lot or there's issues. So generally I would say no to outside of global shipping. To be successful on eBay, you're going to need a shipping scale. And your bathroom scale is not a shipping scale because it lies. Mine lies real bad. I'm sure yours lies too. So you want to definitely get a good shipping scale. And of course, I know a great place you can get one. Hello, eBay. And my husband actually bought me a beautiful one for our wedding anniversary. And he got it at his favorite toy store called Harbor Freight. So you can kind of price around, but I'm going to send my follow-up link that I actually have um, suggestions with shipping scales. You're also going to need measuring tape that is accurate. I made the mistake of buying a bunch of measuring tape from China and it was way off. And then I got out grandma's seamstress tape and it was right on. So now I'm a firm believer I have to get my measuring tape from Joanne Fabrics. But again, that's something that you can um, sort out. And then you're going to choose package or thick envelope. Now, of course, if you have a giant item, you're going to choose large box. Or if you have furniture, which is easy to sell on eBay, but if you, um, you would choose what's called freight, because I know some of you are interested in selling furniture and I, I might do a webinar on that later, but um, I sell furniture all the time and it's not as hard as you think. In fact, if I could start my eBay life over, I would probably sell furniture, but my husband won't let me bring furniture home, so I can't sell. <laughs> also, there you'll see that there's what's called local pickup only. Now I don't recommend you choose that as your first choice. If you don't mind people coming by your house or your workplace to pick up items, then you definitely could have that as your second choice, but not as your first choice because it's going to cut you short of um, getting added exposure. So it means I'm in Florida. If I have local pickup only, the people over in Georgia may not see my items and they don't mind driving over here to pick up the go-kart or whatever I'm selling. So don't cut yourself short and offer local pickup only. Now, you're going to see lots of choices on the shipping options and we're just trying to get our item listed. I'm trying to make you feel comfortable to get an item up in the system and listed. So I'm just going to suggest to you, you choose USPS Parcel Select Ground just to get the ball rolling. Now when it comes shipping day, which I'm going to talk about more shortly going forward, but um, for getting it listed, let's just choose something. Let's get it up in the system so that we can move on. Next, you're going to put in your PayPal address so that you know how people are going to pay you. You're going to put in your zip code for your item location and then your handling time. Now handling time is very important and you have to stand behind whatever you choose. So if you choose one business day, that means that you're going to ship it within um, 24 hours of them paying it within one business day. So if they pay on Friday at four o'clock, Technically, you don't have to ship that till Monday at four o'clock because Saturday is not a business day. The most desirable one to choose is called same day shipping. However, if you can't do that, definitely don't pick it. 
I like to use same day shipping and then eBay allows us when we set this up to have a cutoff time. So my cutoff time is 11 a.m., which keeps it easy for me to get my shipping done before 11. And then if somebody buys it at two in the afternoon, I'm covered. I don't have to ship it till the next day. What I want to stress is that it's important that you live by whatever you choose, because if you don't, if you say one business day or three business days and you just take your time and you don't get that shipped out in time, a little strike goes on your account. And then after so many strikes, you will get suspended from eBay. You don't want that to happen. So make sure you stand behind what you say you're going to do. And returns. It's more desirable and favorable to have accept returns. Now I accept returns on everything with the exception of a few electronic items. I may say no returns accepted, but it's your call, but it is more desirable to see 30 day returns. Now that I've got all of this gone through my laptop, now I'm going to go to open up my eBay app on my smartphone. And when I open up the eBay app on my smartphone and I go to selling, eBay selling on my app, it'll show you the breakdown of what's happening that time that you open your app. So in this example, I had 619 active listings, uh, 164 were sold, four were unsold, one was paid I needed to ship, one was waiting for payment, and four items had bids. And then if you scroll down, you'll see the word drafts. This is where all of those items are saved that I started on my laptop. So when I want to finish them off and add photos, all I do is click on the item on what I'm going to finish up. And when I click on it, now it's going to show me on this day I was listing um, a pipe. And so it'll show me the breakdown, but all I care about is the photo. So I'm going to click on the photo graphic. And when I click on that, I'm going to, up will come this screen. So now I have the choice to either take pictures with my camera or to use my photo library. And what that means is if I'm going to take pictures with my smartphone camera, they're going to go directly to eBay. I'm going to choose camera. They're going to go directly to eBay. If I choose photo library, that means it's going to pull up the library of photos that I took yesterday or to the, earlier in the day or earlier. The What I love about this is I don't have to store photos on my phone. So I use the camera so that I can take pictures directly at the moment. And then as I'm taking pictures, I like to and highly recommend you have 12 photos or as many as possible. Every photo um, I is I, I don't know if you've ever been to a timeshare before, but I like to talk about this as being a timeshare because a timeshare, when you go to one of those, they have the closers and the closers are the hardcore selling person that comes in and tries to talk you into that item. I feel that your photos, every photo is like a closer of the sale. So the more photos that you had, the more the person is flicking through, looking at photos, every photo is like, oh, oh, I got to buy it. I got to buy it. Whereas if you just got one or two photos, they tend to walk away. Now I say this from experience because this is how I like to shop. And after I have fingered through a few photos, then it closes the deal. It makes me want to buy it. So you take all your photos. There's 12 that I took on the left. And then once you're done, you click done and then close. And then now they're back into the draft area. So, or I could list it right directly from my phone. However, I like to go back to my desktop and I click on completed to complete the draft. So I'm going to go to seller hub, go back to my listings and then click on drafts. And I'll go back to the item because, in my opinion, the eBay uh, website from my desktop or laptop has the absolute best photo editing tools built into eBay. I don't have to download anything. Like back in the day, I used to have to use Photoshop and all of these tools to edit photos. And now eBay has all of these tools built in, and they're excellent. They've really done a, a great job setting this up. 
However, on the mobile app, as of today, um, I'm not crazy about the photo editing tool built on the eBay app. Could change tomorrow, I don't know, but for now, this is how I do it. The first one is the crop tool, and you'll see when you just click on it how it works. The next one's the rotate tool, and then we have the, the brighten and contrast, and then the sharpen, and the magic wand, I call it. Sometimes the magic wand works, sometimes it don't. And sometimes it, it does a great job and you can get by with just the magic wand. But you want a clear, crisp photo that's going to make your item pop. That's the bottom line. Now, after you've done all that, you're going to click on either list item, preview the listing, or save as draft. Or guess what? You could just cancel it. So you can go through this whole process. You could just do a quick search for... Um, chapstick and click on sell one like this and then just go through this whole process and then you're just going to delete it so the thing is it's nothing's in stone you can go through and practice it until you feel comfortable enough to click on list item all right let's talk about fees for a minute excuse me i'm gonna take a drink <clears throat> it's now the fun part fees all right, so we basically have three fees on eBay. So we have our insertion fee, our final value fee, and our PayPal fee. Now the eBay insertion fees are based by categories. So the standard fees for most categories are 35 cents per listing. And the final value fee is the percentage of the total amount of the sale, which is about 10%, with a maximum of $750. So they're not going to charge you more than $750 in those categories. And then if you go down, we've got heavy equipment and commercial printing presses, food trucks, trailers, and carts. The insertion fee is going to be $20. And then the final value fee is going to be 2% with a maximum cutoff of $300. Down one more notch is the musical instruments and gear, guitars and basses. It's free insertion. And then it's 3.5% max of $350, the final value fee. Now eBay Motors is a little different than eBay.com. They're basically gonna charge you $60 um, for up to 2,000 successful listing fee and 125 for more than 2,000. For high volume sellers, the insertion fee will be $50 and $20, and then you can see the breakdown. Successful listing fee for vehicle prices up to 5,000 is free, and then motorcycles is $30 and $60. So this will give you a better understanding of how that works. Now, since we're talking for a few seconds about eBay Motors, eBay Motors is a little different beast than eBay.com. eBay Motors um, has different rules with their selling, but um, every state is different about selling vehicles. I know in the state of Florida, I think you can only sell three cars without getting a, a license, so a car dealer license. So you might want to check the rules for your area if you're going to think, wow, I'm going to start selling cars. PayPal fees right now are 2.9% per item plus 30 cents per transaction. Now, eBay is has just launched what's called Managed Payments, I'm in the beta program with it, and that means that my account does not accept PayPal. So I'm only accepting um, managed payments, which means payments through eBay. So eBay is only charging 2.7%, and there is no transaction fee. So the advantage of using managed payments is the money goes directly into my bank versus when it goes into PayPal, I have to transfer it to my bank or I can use a PayPal debit card. 
So those are your choices when you're using PayPal. Managed payments is not available for everybody yet, but it will be offered next year. So stay tuned for that. Right now it's PayPal. The basic tip to remember and how I live my life is I call it the 15% rule. My fees run less than that, but I like to keep 15% because it's easier math. So like if I'm out product sourcing and something's, I do a quick search on my phone on sold listings and the items are selling for $30 and the store is charging $5 and then I figure, okay, let's add 15% to that for, um, fees and then let's figure it's going to cost me six dollars to ship it and so now I can break down in my head my profit margin my projected profit margin and know whether to buy that item while I'm out treasure hunting the sweetest sound in the world is when your phone goes ka-ching <laughs> I was hoping mine would go off while we were talking but it has so what happens is a lot of times people say, well, Dana, how will I know I have an eBay sale? How, how will I find out? Well, your smartphone will go ka-ching. So you'll hear the cash register sound on your phone. And don't worry if you don't hear it because you'll also get an email and it'll be on your dashboard when you log into eBay. There'll be a message there and you'll be able to take a look at everything from your smartphone. So here's an example of a wheelchair that I sold and it let me know that it's paid, they paid for it, and I've got to ship it now. You'll also receive an email from PayPal saying, hey, your item's been paid for. You'll get a message from eBay and it'll be in your dashboard on eBay. So yes, you got to notice that it's, it's sold and then you get wait for that second notice that says it's paid for because we don't pay, we don't ship till it's paid for. All right, so I do not want you to be afraid. <laughs> yeah, this may look like some of you because so many people that I've taught over the years are so afraid of shipping and that's what's holding people back. So I want you to understand it's not as difficult of a task that you're making it out to be. So there's nothing to be afraid on shipping. The postal service is gonna be your best friend. So first I'm going to suggest you go to usps.com and create an account. It's absolutely free. And then you can order free boxes and free shipping supplies. You can order everything but tape. So you can order priority mail stickers and then use those on your own boxes as well. But I think it's a good idea to have a little bit of a variety of these boxes and I'll show you why shortly. But Shipping in priority mail, in my opinion, is the easiest way to go. So you're going to need a postal scale and some boxes, packing peanuts for those of you that are going to be selling glassware or fragile items. I have a bunch of ham radios to sell, and I've got bubble wrap and packing peanuts ready for those fragile items. I recommend using only big bubble wrap, not little bubbles. In my opinion, the little bubble wrap is worthless. You have to buy the kind with big bubbles and it's my favorite. Clear packaging tape, or you can get eBay tape through eBay, which I'm gonna send you links to all this. And you're gonna need a printer with paper or labels because you're gonna print your shipping labels on a printer and it's gonna work out great. And I'll show you shortly. Bottom line, you want to have a properly sized box. You're going to fill packaging material all around your item. Your item should not touch the inside of the box. Wrap single items in big bubble wrap and then double box if fragile. So what I did, I had a bunch of head vases, for example, or flower vases, you call them. And I, I put paper inside the vase and then I wrapped up because my husband reads the paper, so we have a lot of paper. I wrap paper around the vase, and then I rolled it in the big bubble wrap, and then I just cut a piece of cardboard and 
rolled it around the vase. So now I made a cylinder around the vase. So it's bubble wrap and in a cylinder. And then now I slide that into what I purchase or I get for free from the post office. It's called a shoe box. And they're brilliant for sending vases or steins or things like that in. And you just put bubble wrap in the bottom of the box, slide your cylinder in, and then bubble wrap or popcorn or paper around the side so that your, your cylinder isn't touching the inside of the box. Seal it up. And I shipped 89 of those one by one and not one broke. So, and I shipped them all the same way in those big shoe boxes with my cylinders. Then you want to pack or weigh your item and make note of the weight. Now, when you log into eBay, you could do this from your phone as well. You'll see it'll say print shipping label. And it's as simple as clicking on those words, print shipping label. And when you click on it, it'll bring up your choices from eBay now. You can sit back and take a look. It's going to bring in their address, your address, all of the information needed. Um, this was a screenshot from 2017. I sold a Starbucks mug for $24.99. And then I clicked on compare delivery services. Now, you may see a little bit of a different screen, but the main thing is you always want to compare delivery services no matter what screen you see because now you can take a look at the breakdown of all of your options. So you can see we could, if the mug would fit in a flat rate envelope, it wouldn't, I would never ship that way or recommend it, but I could if I, if I wanted to, um, then I can look at all of the options. Now notice down below, it's one, two, three, four from the bottom. It's on the left, it says regional, Priority mail, one to three days, regional box A, regional box B. I want you to order a few of those boxes when you go to the USPS.com because if you have a few of those in your, in, uh, in your office or in your home, when it comes shipping day, sometimes it's cheaper to use those. And if you don't have them, then you can't use them. So go ahead and order some of all of these shipping supplies from the padded flat envelopes to the large flat rate box. Uh, order one or a couple of each of these so you can at least understand what they are. And again, if you don't have them, you can't use them. And sometimes I can save money by using those special ones. In this situation, I can use a first class package. It was only $2.92. So once you go through all this, you're going to put your item in the box on the scale and you're going to put in the weight and the measurements and click calculate. So now you can take a look at all of your options and you shouldn't lose money on shipping. I've had people come to me and go, oh, Dan, I'm losing so much money on shipping. Well, hello, they're not going in and they're not calculating and they're not taking a look at all of their options. They're not clicking on compare shipping. They're going by whatever they put in the day they listed it. So this is really important. You won't lose money if you have a shipping scale. So click save. And then now, if you need to add extra insurance, you can do that. Or if I'm shipping Louis Vuitton and it's going to an apartment in New York City, I'm going to add some added insurance and I'm probably going to have them sign for it. That's my responsibility as a seller to take care of that as a business person. If I use priority mail and it's um, under a hundred dollars, well, under $50 for you, if, Priority mail is automatically insured up to $50. So that's another advantage of shipping priority mail and not having to insure it if it's valued under 50. When you become a top rated seller on eBay, priority mail is $100 coverage. So if I sell an item over $100, then I would click on add extra insurance. And then once you've done all this, you've filled it all out, you're simply going to click on purchase postage. And when you click on that, now it is in stone. Now it's going to take that stamp money right out of your PayPal account. And now you're going to print out your label and it'll say um, your postage, everything's on there, your tracking number, your customer just got a link 
or a notice saying your item was just shipped and here's your tracking number. You don't have to contact your customer again. You're going to cut this out on a regular eight and a half by 11 and tape it securely around all four sides onto the box or the package. It's just recommended, the post office does not recommend that you put tape over the barcode in case it smears. So they just recommend you put it around the four sides. Now you can also go back to your eBay dashboard and click on um, orders and you can take a look at your shipping. When you click orders, you can see the breakdown of things happening. And if you made a mistake on that shipping label, you go, oh my gosh, I just packaged up this cookie jar and I forgot to put the lid in the box. So now I have to go void that label. So you can go to shipping labels and then now it'll show you the breakdown of all of the shipping labels that you've had recently. And you can go ahead and look at your eBay item number. It'll show you who it went to, how you shipped it. And off to the far right, you can reprint your label if you made a mistake. You can also see more actions under that. And when you click on more actions, you'll find the word void. So you can void your label. You have, I think it's 24 hours to void your label. And then um, you can reprint a new label. So in review, you're going to need a shipping scale and boxes, supplies. Research, research, research before you list. I can't stress that part enough because it's so important. 80 characters. Remember, bait on the hook. Every word is a piece of bait. 12 clear, crisp photos. Keep your description short, sweet, left margin. Offer free shipping. And now if you have a really heavy item and you're like, oh my God, Dana, I don't know what to charge for shipping, then you can choose what's called calculated shipping. And then you would take your item and put it on the scale and put the box on the scale and weigh it all and put in the weight and the measurements and then just choose calculated um, priority mail or or um, FedEx or whatever you choose. And then no matter where they live, anywhere in the world, it'll automatically adjust and show how much shipping is to them. You don't have to worry about it. And then when it comes shipping day, your account will automatically, um, they've automatically been charged the proper shipping amount for postage. And then you'll already be covered on that. So if you have any questions about that, just let me know. Global shipping, say yes. It's also known as the GSP, Global Shipping Program. Print your labels, but don't forget to click on compare shipping prices. And then, of course, secure your package. Keep it secure. And then feedback. Now, feedback is up to you. It's however you want to do it. eBay recommends that the person has paid you. They've done their job. So you should leave them feedback and let them know it's been shipped, but it's your call. Now, my husband, he won't leave you feedback till you leave him feedback. <laughs> That's fine. There is no rule. You can do what, whichever you would like, but it is nice to leave feedback. So a few final words. People will ask me about taxes, and I usually say, taxes, what's that? But we all know we have to pay our taxes. I can't advise you on taxes. I'm not a legal tax advisor, but you can go to paypal.com slash IRS and learn more there. Also, once 200 transactions or $20,000 has passed through your PayPal account, then a 1099 is sent to the IRS, and that's from PayPal. At this time, eBay does not issue a 1099. However, my guess is that's going to change when the managed payment system has um, rolled out in full swing. So eBay in a snapshot, my motto is, you may have heard me or my website, there's plenty of eBay for us all to be blessed and prosper. I'm a strong believer in this. You can take eBay any direction you want. If you want to be a part-time seller or just sell some things around the house or you push up your sleeves and say, you know what, I'm going for it. And that's what I did back in, um, well, I started in um, 
97 and then in 98 I quit all three of my jobs and went full time. And it was just a matter of setting goals for myself and making the decision to go for it. So it's up to you. You can take it any way you want. If you need more help or you get stuck with setting up your page or registration or whatever, you can just call eBay. You call them every 10 minutes. <laughs> um, the number is 1-866-540 Three, two, two, nine. Let me see. I just got another number. Let me see what it's saying. Sorry, I don't know where I wrote it down now. Huh. All right, we'll try that number. You're now ready to source, list, manage, and sell more merchandise. Your money's in PayPal. You can transfer it to your bank. You can transfer it to your checking account. You can transfer it to your savings account. You can transfer it to your husband don't know about account. So you can easily transfer money from PayPal and you can have more than one account. You can also order a PayPal debit card. Just call them and say, hey, can you send me a debit card? And they will. Your goal is to become a top rated seller and you can reach that within a few months. And that's simple. Just follow the rules and um, follow the steps and you'll become a top rated seller and then you'll get discounts. You'll become a part of over 90 million active members. And of course, you can learn more at powersellingmom.com and enjoy researching at worthpoint.com. So if you're interested in a WorthPoint subscription, they are giving a 50% off coupon. So write this down. It's webinar, all in caps, webinar 1219. And it's only valid for a few days. And it'll give you 50% off the first month. And if you have any questions, just shoot me an email. So I'm going to turn off the recording now and go to questions. I see there's some questions in the questions box. And I um, greatly appreciate it. <laughs> That's a wrap. I'm going to stop the recording and go to questions. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. And happy eBay selling. I'm Dana Crawford. Bye.